show you some code, guys. All right, guys, so this code is a TCP server, essentially. This is Node.js. I'm using Visual Studio Code. Don't worry, I'm gonna give you the code in the description below, so you don't have to literally write it, but essentially, let's go through it line by line. This requires a package on the Node.js called Net, and we use Net to create a server. Obviously, we're gonna create a server. And then that server will give us a socket, and this is our connection, essentially. So that socket, once we connect, not, not once we connect, once we create our server and start, start listening to that, what we're gonna do is the moment a client connects to us, we're gonna send it back. We're gonna write back to the client the word hello. And we're gonna do this once. This is the, just when the client connects, okay? But then, we're gonna do this. On data, that means if the server, if the client sends us more data, we're gonna call this function, and that function will receive the data, and well, what does it do? It just prints it on here, literally. We're gonna put it in the debug console. Does that make sense? And obviously, we're listening on a port called 8080, because we got, remember, IP address and port. Our IP address is 127.0.0.1. This is the loop back. I'm gonna use that because we're on the same machine, but you get the idea. The port is 8080, that's my application. So I have a TCP server. Let's go ahead and run it. And after we're gonna run it, we're gonna go to the terminal and then connect to my server. Let's do that, how about that guys? Debug, start debugging, and then leave the string running. And then you can see we are now running, okay? And you can see it because the See, the debugger is not stopping because it's waiting for connection. And that's my point by the memory thing, right? Because it's like we're waiting, we're waiting. We have a server that's constantly waiting for connection, okay? And that, now that we have a server on port 8080, let's go to the connection and use Telnet, which is like a built-in. I think if you don't have Telnet, just use Brew and install if you, in case of Mac. And in case of Windows, you can, I think, install from the Windows feature. Telnet is right there. And then I'm gonna to connect to 127.0.0.1, okay, which is my local machine, or you can use Hussein Mac, which is host name, the, my host name. And then port is 8080. And look at what will happen. This will say trying 127 connected to local host, and emphasis on the word connected. I am connection. This is a connection has been established. So whatever we talked about that, guys, acknowledgement and all that stuff, and hey, can I connect to you and all that jazz has has happened now. And look at that, guys. Hello, we received the word hello from the server, okay? And I have put a breakpoint, guys, here. That means, essentially, when, when I send information, we're gonna trip and stop the code here, okay? Just to show you. So I'm gonna so send something. Let's send the word, hi, enter. Enter, I will actually trigger it. Look at that, we got a breakpoint. We got the word date, we got data, and essentially data is only sending on bytes. This is, this is the buffer. So we have four bytes. Why do we have four bytes? I sent two word, two letters, which is two bytes, right? So the word H, the word I, the word <laughs> the, the letter H, the, the letter I, and then 13 and 10 is the carriage return, which is the enter. It's two bytes for some reason, I don't remember. Okay, but what I essentially does is do that and then hey, look at that. Hi. Dude, that feels like a horror movie right now. It's just missing the blinking cursor. Oh my god, I'm freaking out. Okay. Imagine just you receive a hi. <laughs> out, of, out of nowhere. Hi. That is so creepy. Jeez. Okay. Alright, so you get the idea, right? Hi. Let's do Sup. We get sup. Okay, I'm not as frightened with sup. This cool. This guy's cool. All right, and then you can send stuff, right? My name is Hussein. All right. You can see, right? We get the idea. Now let's let's demonstrate what will happen if I d just kill the server. Okay, if I kill the server, kill it. Go back to the client. What? Connection closed by foreign host. Host? By foreign host. These exotic foreign hosts, man. They keep closing these connections, man. 
Connection closed by foreign host. Okay, so now, okay, let, let's send some more information. What? I just lost my stuff. I was in the middle of a connection, I just lost. That's the statefulness that we talked about, guys. Okay, let's jump into some code. All right, guys, so what you're seeing here is Node.js app that creates a socket, creates a server, and listens on port 8081. It's a UDP protocol here, okay? And what we're gonna do essentially is go through line by line, very simple. We're gonna require uh, the package that's called dgram, and then when we when we get that, we're gonna create a socket on UDP4, which is IPv4. There is UDP4 and UDP6 there for those two uh, IP addresses systems. So you can create a socket, and then you create an event. Hey, when I receive a message, call this function, please. And just literally what this does, like server got this message from this thing. Okay, that's exactly what it does. Very simple stuff. And obviously it binds the port 8081 to this socket so it keeps listening, okay? So similar thing, nothing different. We're still listening, right? But there, there is no concept of connection. I'm gonna show that. So we're listening to port 8081. I just immediately, I'm not gonna connect. I'm just sending data. How about we do that, guys? And here's, go back to the terminal. What we're gonna do is, we're gonna print echo. Yes, so hi, right? And then here's what, how, what here's how you essentially do it. Okay, so echo hi. We're gonna, you know, this pipe essentially what it does is takes this data and send it to whatever the 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 right hand side is. What we're gonna send the hi to is NC, which stands for netcat and dash w. This is optional if you want to, but this essentially establish a timeout, right? I don't know why. It's, is time out there is one w in timeout they chose w instead of t for some reason okay timeout of one second after one second give up that's what it means okay but you you can always uh, you can remove that altogether if you want to and send it to this server obviously localhost that's that's the 127001 same machine and then the port 8081 Entire, just like that we got it guys we got the data let's capture let's see what we got let's see what we got we got a message three bytes no it's actually more than that so you can you can notice that the the udp send makes uh, three bytes the word tcp has four okay the carriage return only has the 10 which is the enter versus the tcp as both 10 and 13, two bytes for the enter. So it's just like that, it's essentially an extra byte. All right, so this is the high, and what we're gonna do is just like, let's make it to string and print it, and you can see that, hey, I got high, and I got it from 127.0.0.1, and this is the internal IP address of the client, right? We talked about uh, the internal port and the external port, we talked about that in the, the client port, essentially, and the server port. We talked about that in the OSI model. Check that video out, guys. But essentially, guys, what I want to explain to you is I can turn around and send another request here. Say, for example, hello. Okay. And then I get it. I can kill the server and then literally restart it. And the client can still communicate with me. That's the stateless part of this aspect, right? It is always the client doesn't keep information about the server and the server doesn't keep information about the client. It just receives stuff. It doesn't save anything in memory per se. It's just like literally. <laughs>